Hey everyone, let's talk about right triangles. Um, we're going to use a lot of the math that you've been learning all throughout high school in physics. And uh, one of my favorite things about being a physics teacher is when students tell me, oh, oh, that's what you would use that for. And I'm like, yeah. Um, so just a real quick review here about a lot of the trigonometry that you've done in your previous classes. When we talk about right triangles, we're talking about a triangle that has one 90 degree angle, okay? And so this 90 degree angle here is something that most people are really, really familiar with. So in this example triangle I have over here, this is, oops, sorry about that, this is our right angle. Now opposite this right angle, and of course, you know, we know that right angles are 90 degrees. We also call this um, line perpendicular uh, to the line here that looks like, you know, it could be the ground or something. In terms of the 90 degree angle, the largest side is opposite your 90 degree angle. And, and everybody knows this pretty weird word for the largest side of the triangle known as the hypotenuse. The vocabulary for the other two sides, um, I know a lot of people call them legs of the triangle. And even though these two legs may not be equal um, in length, I mean, they could be, right, if you had a 45 angle here and a 45 here. But most of the time, these legs um, could be different lengths here. Um, we call them leg one and leg two. So if we think about it, um, we've used the Pythagorean theorem in the past here in all of your previous math courses to be able to find a missing side. So maybe it's the first leg that's missing, second leg that's missing, or the hypotenuse itself. It's really important that the hypotenuse kind of be like treated special, and so this guy always ends up on the right side of the equation. So with Pythagorean theorem, C is the uh, symbol that we use for hypotenuse. And you just really want to make sure that the C is actually the hypotenuse. So that would be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And if we're working in physics and we need a side to a missing triangle, and uh, that right, this triangle happens to be a right triangle, then of course, you know, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. And, you know, one thing to mention is that when it comes to the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the hypotenuse has to be C. But in terms of the legs, this addition here, um, you know, is commutative. It doesn't matter if a person uses this leg um, for the A or this leg for the A. In this case, I'm going to put a B here. But um, it doesn't matter if these are switched. You would still get the same answer. So when we talk about trigonometry, trigonometry is a way um, for us to kind of deal with the ratios between the angles of a triangle and specific sides of that triangle. So hopefully you remember this idea from your math classes, uh, Sokotoa, right? So this is a way for us to remember what the names of these trigonometric relationships are. So this idea of Sokotoa, the S, the C and the T stand for the trigonometric functions. And then the, the next two letters are going to tell us which sides um, are kind of being compared here. So make sure that you know um, that the sine of any angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That's where we're getting the so from. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, this guy or not. This is the Greek symbol theta. And so in physics, we use this symbol theta um, very often, actually, um, to talk about angles that we're interested in. If I go back to the example triangle, I could name any of these three angles theta. Okay, um, It's just a way of saying which, which angle we are talking about. So every time I deal with anything um, that deals with triangles, I always draw a picture because if I'm working with somebody else, I want them to know which angle I'm talking about. So yeah, so theta is just a nickname for angle. When it comes to cosine, here's your ca. It's adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And for tangent of any angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. 
So let's take a look at a couple of problems here that uh, allow us to find a missing side or find some missing angles. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples of how we might use right triangles uh, at the beginning of the year here in AP Physics. So at the top here, I've written um, SOKOTOA, which is just a way to remember um, those trigonometric functions of sine, cosine, and tangent. And then underneath that, the Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus b squared equals c squared that may help us find a missing side if two other sides are known. So for the first example, We've got a right triangle here. Here's our right angle where the hypotenuse is given as 25 meters. We have one of the legs here. <clears throat> the leg in the vertical here is given as 9 meters. And we're missing this horizontal leg, this x. We're asked to find x. This is just a simple Pythagorean theorem problem. I do know this 90 degree angle, but because I know that this is the hypotenuse, I'm going to call this C, right? So our C is equal to 25 meters. I'm going to call this 9 meters A because it's one of the legs. And then our X is e equal um, to B here. So to, in order to find side X, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem here, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so I've got 9 meters. I've got to be sure to square that plus this unknown B squared equals our hypotenuse squared, which happens to be 25 meters. I'll square that. 9 meters times 9 meters is 81 meters squared, plus the unknown b squared. And 25 meters times 25 meters is 625 meters squared. I'm trying to get b by itself here, so I'm going to subtract 81 meters squared from each side. And you end up with b squared is equal to 544. I'm still trying to find just b. So because this is b squared, if I take the square root of each side, oh, sorry, somehow I left my units here. That's pretty bad. I've got, I've got 625 meters squared minus 81 meters squared. This would be um, 544 meters squared. If I take the square root of 544, I end up with about 23.3. And the units were meters squared, and the square root of that is in meters. And that makes sense that if you're looking for a length, you would end up with meters. In the next example here, we have a couple of vectors. So during the first few weeks of school, we're going to talk about how we have these lines here with these arrows at the end. So you can see that this 100 Newton arrow is at this angle here. And the angle is given. It's give, this 100 Newtons is uh, 30 degrees above this x-axis here. The y um, component here is upwards, and the x is going to the right. But when we put them all together, they still make a simple right triangle. So what's interesting about this example is this has some units on it, 100 newtons. And in physics, newtons are used for force. So I know that um, this is somebody exerting a force on some object at an angle. Maybe it's somebody pulling a wagon. Uh, maybe it's somebody hitting a volleyball at an angle. But here's what we're given. And we're asked to find both missing sides, x and y. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out where the right angle hit here is. And of course, we have this written uh, right over here. We've got our right angle. Now we know that this is 30 degrees. So most people know, well, hey, Mrs. Carroll, this top one, we also know then, you know, it's 60, which is completely correct. But for now, I'm just going to deal with this 30 degree angle here. And I'm going to name that our theta. So I'm going to have theta be this 30 degree angle. And if that's the case, then I want to think about what each side is relative to theta. So what I mean by that is 100 newtons is our hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degree angle. Now relative to theta, what would that make y? Is it adjacent or is it opposite? For the 30 degree angle here, this y side is opposite of that angle. 
and this x side is adjacent to that angle. Now I just want to point out, if you wanted to use this 60 degree angle up here at the top, it kind of changes the game. So 100 newtons would still be the hypotenuse, but x would be opposite of your 60 degree angle and y would be adjacent. So I think it's really important to just give yourself a quick minute to figure out wh what sides you have and kind of what's what here because a lot of just, you know, really careless mistakes are made there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do if I want to find side y is kind of take a look at what I have here. If I want to find side y, that's the opposite side and the hypotenuse is what's known. So I've got opposite and hypotenuse. Okay, so that's going to be so, right, for the sine. Okay, so if I have the sine of any angle theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I happen to know that theta is 30 degrees, so now I know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the unknown y all over 100 newtons, which is the hypotenuse. Okay, so now, you know, the sine of 30, it's kind of like it's over the number 1 here. And you can kind of cross multiply here, you know, y times 1, leaving us with y over here. And then we have sine of 30 degrees multiplied by 100 newtons. And the sine of 30 degrees is 0 0.5, so I end up having 0 0.5 times 100 newtons. And this tells me that side y is equivalent to 50 newtons. Notice here in terms of units that this is 100 newtons, and the sine of 30 degrees doesn't have any units. So that's why we end up with newtons times no units would give you newtons in the end here. So side y is 50 newtons. Okay. Can we do the same thing for x? Let's see. If I want to find side x, I'm trying to find the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is known, so I'm going to be using co, which is cosine. So now I need the cosine of theta. So the cosine of any angle theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. This is going to be the cosine of the angle 30 degrees and that would equal x over 100 newtons. Again, I can cross multiply here, so I have x equals the cosine of 30 degrees times 100 newtons. And the cosine of 30 degrees is about 0 0.866, so if I multiply that times 100 newtons, you're getting about 87 newtons here. Okay, so let's take a look at an example where we don't have any angles other than the right angle. So in this case here, we've named this unknown angle theta, and we've got our right angle down here, and we're trying to find the angle theta. Well, the first thing I want to do is figure out what I know relative to theta. So if this is going to be my angle of interest, the 220 newtons is the side that's opposite. The 750 is the hypotenuse. And this unknown side is the adjacent, but it's not asking us to find that. Okay, so if I know the opposite side and I know the hypotenuse, what I'm really looking for is sine. So the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Now I don't know theta yet, so I'm just going to leave that as its symbol, the sine of theta there. The opposite side is 220 newtons, and the hypotenuse is 750 newtons. So you probably remember from your math courses, if you have the sine of theta, and you know the two sides, there's a function that you can use that can tell you what this missing piece is, what this angle is. And it's called the inverse sine. So we could write this as sine, see the negative one here, it's the inverse sine, um, of 220 newtons divided by 750 newtons 
is equal to theta. And then if you put that into your calculator, inverse sine of 220 over 750, you figure out that theta is about 17 degrees. I hope these examples get you started here on the summer assignment. And as always, if you have any questions, just send me an email and let me know, and I'll be happy to help. See you soon.